boss was getting ready to take revenge. He'd been planning to do the deed. He was about to shoot three men dead in cold blood on the streets of Liverpool. To give him courage to carry out the task, he prayed to the dead father of a friend and invited his spirit to come and live inside him. Darren believes what happened next was a battle between the forces of good and evil, followed by a vision of Jesus. The heavenly figure spoke and told him to give himself up to the police. He ended up in a prison cell, and it was there that Darren Moss had his turning point. Darren, what was it that motivated you, that drove you to want to kill three people? Well, um, when I was about 27 years of age, I was involved with these certain guys in Liverpool. And uh, one of my mates, really good mate, it was like a brother to me. Well, he got attacked by 10 guys and he had all that balaclavas on. And he, he tried to kill him. He attacked him, he got a hammer over his head. And he went down and, and managed to escape. I don't know how, but he escaped. Um, and he, 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 the next day, he went to the hospital and the next day, he, uh, he, he wanted revenge on his attackers. So I went to see him and he, because he's very loyal to me like a brother. And what, what we done then is we went to Spain so we could recover from his injuries. And uh, <clears throat> so we could, uh, you know, think about the plans of how to take revenge on these guys. You get to Spain and you start planning this revenge. What happens next? Well, we just enjoying ourselves at first, to, just to get away from it all. So then about three nights after being there, we heard news that one of his attackers had been shot um, by our friend. This um, sounds like a violent environment. What sort of gang culture was it? Um, it was, we were just, we were, we were dormant and we were out for ourselves, living for ourselves. Our life was going out partying, going out with different women and that was that was our life um, and that's all we wanted to do really but wasn't violence a part of that it well? wasn't it was when it needed to be used but most of the time um well, in fact all the time i never recall one occasion where we where we attacked anybody it was all always in defense of other people wanting to stir up trouble with us you know you organized this plan for revenge right but do you ever carry it out? I, I never actually carried it out at that point. Uh, while I was in Spain, um, we had a... We, we, when we heard the news that this guy had been shot, um, we, we said we won't go out that night, we'd stay in. And that's what we done. We, uh, we, we stayed in and there was five people in the house. And we had an encounter with with a spiritual force. Um, what do you mean? Well, five of us, especially me, I was the first to come aware that there was a, a spiritual presence in the house. I didn't understand it, but a, a fear came over me, and I fled from the bedroom and I went into my friend's bedroom, and I told him. And next minute, uh, we had this violence. Um, atmosphere uh, take place in the, in the house and um, while we're in the, the bedroom um, we both believed it was his dad and his brother who were dead coming back to tell us what's going on because this would never have happened to him if uh, they would have been alive so his dead brother and father were speaking to you from the grave telling you that you had to carry out revenge help him take revenge because he'd been loyal to me and you know if you're loyal to him then you better show it because that's what i felt the dead person say to me had you had any experience like this before never never he wasn't scared of 10 men but i was scared of this to get me courage up and um, it was actually the next day i actually because I, I i thought how am i gonna live another night like this is this fear they might come back and get me you know so i thought if i can't live another night in spain how am i gonna live in liverpool uh, live by myself, you know, so I have to get over this this fear feeling so uh, to, to, to combat that I began to pray to his dad and I started to pray I know why you've come don't worry I'm gonna stick by him and uh, all of a sudden I believe that he'd come back from the dead because he wants to live in me because he wants to be alive in me so that we can dominate the city and 
just be like it was when before he was dead, you know. You hear this this voice, his father, he's telling you to go and carry out the murder. Do you go and do it? Not, no, at that point, what, what had happened, um, the spirit had come into me, and I knew it had come into me, and it, because I started to devise a plan how to kill three of the guys who attacked, and we knew at that point who, well, three of the attackers. So I started to devise a plan how um, we're going to take revenge um, without getting caught by the police. Um, so what I've done is um, I've devised this plan and almost instantly this vision appeared in the bedroom and it's funny, it appeared in the wardrobe and, uh, you know, a strange place to appear but funny enough, on the way over to Spain my friend had said to me "If, if my mum said, when you get back to Liverpool you can wear an all those clothes which is his brother, that was his brother who, who died now that was another uh, revelation how I believe, what I believe that his dad and his brother come out from the dead and he wanted me to come and live in me and we walk around wearing the clothes and um, so I actually returned back to Liverpool with him plans to kill these guys and I actually moved into his mother's house she was aware of spiritual forces she believed that a, de- a dead son was alive you know even living in the house so I actually moved into the the dead son's bedroom and um, believing this is um, this is right and um, you know this is justice almost getting closer to him yeah that's right I felt and then but all of a sudden I had this um, this this I was reminded of something my school teacher had said to me when I was seven and what it was it was a, it was a scripture out of the Bible and it said The devil masquerades around as the angel of light. And at that point, I realized this vision of Jesus I saw was not Jesus. And it was not justice. I was being deceived and I was being used. So I called on God. I knew he was the only way out for me and I called out to God. And I promised him I wouldn't do anything wrong ever again. Just please help me, deliver me from this evil. But you actually took some action yourself, didn't you? You handed yourself over. I, I was I was led to the police, um, and the police. Um, I, 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 it was like as if a conviction came upon me. Of, oh, everything in, me, in my house was stolen. I had my lecky on the fiddle. There was nothing about my life that was right. There was it, there was so much corruption in my life, and I had a conviction that I had prayed out to God, and God was saying to me, "Look, if you're sorry, show me that you're sorry." So I told the police. The police actually took me. To, to the police station, they wanted to know all about the shooting. Um, I was, they locked me up, put me in the, in the uh, police cell. So you effectively handed yourself over? I, I did actually, sort of, yeah. I confessed, I'd come to the point where I was sorry and I said, look, I don't go, care if I go to jail for six, seven years. What happened in the police cell? While I was in there, um, a fear came over me again. I had this fear of darkness. I couldn't, I had not sleep at this point for three nights. And uh, I couldn't live another night. I was very weak. I was being tormented in the mind. Um, and I, I turned to God. And as I turned to God, this um, this uh, peace just came over me. I prayed to God saying, please help me. And this peace just overwhelmed me. And the word of God actually came to me. Just, oh, just clearly, God spoke to me. Clearly, God spoke to me. And I just, I was filled with joy because I met the Almighty God in this police cell. And I was crying with joy. And the police officer um, s- s- saw me and he asked me, would I like to see a doctor? Um, so I shared with the doctor, well, if, if you've been sharing with yourself. And uh, they, they recommended that I went into a set local psychiatric, psychiatric hospital. Um, so I agreed to go in there and I felt that this is where God wanted me. It's interesting that the doctor referred you to a psychiatric hospital because some people hearing your story would say, well, actually, maybe you had some kind of psychiatric problem. What convinced you that the person that you were feeling and listening to was God? Why did you believe that? Um, because what he had said to me, he had said, said to me something which was so clear in my mind, which was like, um, which gave me hope and security 
I love. Um, and it was like a God putting his arms around me and saying, look, this is what I'm going to do for you. Just listen to me. And he said to me, I'm your father. And it was like God speaking to me, saying, look, you, you're possessed by this spirit and you need to be, this is what you've got to do. So I began to seek God. And after three days in the psychiatric ward, um, I felt the evil spirit let leave me. And I felt like a newborn baby. They diagnosed me as a schizophrenic before I went in there. After 10 days, I felt totally free. I left the psychiatric ward. After 30 days, the conclusion of the matter um, on the doctor's report was face to face to me that my belief had made me well. I felt totally cleansed, although I was still a bit paranoid of, of, of uh, the physical trap I was in, coming out from being involved with, with these guys, you know. You went through that experience. What happened and what has happened to your life since then? It's, it's, it's just amazing. Shortly after I came out of the psychiatric ward, I discovered that um, Jesus had gave his life for me. I had a revelation that Jesus Christ had gave his life for me. So I gave my life back to Jesus Christ. And I've been following Jesus Christ for the last um, seven years now. As a Christian. As a Christian. And he's, um, he's really given me hope and he's given me joy and he's put my life in order. Are you still in a gang? I'm not in a gang, I turned away. I almost instantly separated myself from the guys I was involved in. Involvement in violence? Never in violence. Um, I've totally, slowly come free from it all. And now I'm, um, I'm a co-director of a, of a construction business in Liverpool, um, which in a way is like my heart's, always been my heart's desire to be successful in business. And it's, it's like as if God, the Almighty God is doing this for me, you know. If you hadn't had that experience, right, do you think you would have been responsible for murdering three people? I really do. I, I, one of the other things that I do on once a month, I go into Ashworth Hospital um, with a church and we take the service in Ashworth Hospital. And um, I really believe with all my heart if I would have committed them murders and I would have told a story to the police i would have got caught in the end and um, they would have referred me to the doctor and they would have i would have been a high security mental hospital for the rest of my life or you know for a long time and um, so part of my ministry as a christian now is to go into the Ashford hospital and i actually went in there one time and shared my story and three guys came to me afterwards and said that happened to me the only difference is they went and killed someone well, Darren, thank you very, very much indeed.